I think it's time that we give Dean a little demonstration here of just running through some back testing of a strategy here. I mean, there's not much to it. Let me uh, whip something up here real quick. All right, so let me just throw in my usual, um, actually, yeah, let's do something different here. Let's back test this simple crossover system here, right? So we have a, a 1030 crossover here. There we go. So we'll just keep it real simple. Back test this crossover system. And let's just do a market entry order and um, let's see, uh, I guess a two ATR profit target. And let's do, let's see, yeah, let's do this one and a half ATR trailing here. Let's see. All right. Yeah, I'm going to oh, switch this up a little bit here. So for this ATR trailing, um, I'll have this one and a half ATR trailing wait until there's two ATRs of profit. There we go. And I'll add a break even in here. All right. So we have a, a break even plus one at one and a half ATRs of profit. And then let's see, this is a 1.5 ATR trailing at two ATRs of profit. There we go. Okay. So let's finish up this break even trailing roll here. So let's go, go into the trigger, go to our profit or loss, and we're looking for a profit of ATRs. And we're looking for a one and a half ATR of profit there. And the action is um, we're going to move the stop loss to the entry price, right? Which is break even plus one. There we go. So a positive one um, added to the entry price. There. All right. And of course, a break even, you can only move to break even once. So there's no repeat on this. There's no repeat. So. All right, so there's a little bit of a little bit of complexity to the stop loss trailing there. Um, no, and I guess my profit target needs to be a little wider, a little further out. So let's go to four ATRs on that profit target there. All right. Um, and let's set this up so that it's only trading during RTH. There we go. All right, so there's US equities RTH. And um, we'll exit um, zero seconds um, before the session ends. All right, click OK. And I'm going to switch my chart out here. So let's see, let's turn Blackbird off for a moment. And let's just switch over to, um, I guess, yeah, a one minute chart. But then also, let's add a few days to the chart as well. So there we go. Let's add 10 days to the chart. All right. And let's see here. I need to turn
Turn the strategy off again. There we go. And I, in order to do back testing, all right, we need to go into Blackbird settings. So I'm going to go into the strategies window. Uh, I'm sorry, we need to go into Blackbird's properties. Sorry, not not the settings, but the properties. All right, bring up the strategies properties window here. And for Blackbird, let's see, let's open up the options there. So for Blackbird, remember you have to turn the back test mode on in order for Blackbird to do back testing. So there we go. So now we can enable the strategy and um, click OK. Yeah. And let me turn on. Let me turn on the uh, the trade executions here. So there we go. We'll set the plot executions to text and markers. And there we have it. All right. So now we can see, you know, um, the trades taking place. And so this would be the overnight session, right? So remember, I have the scheduler turned on. So there's no trades overnight. There we go. And so once we get back to the RTH, now we can see the trades, um, the trade executions again. Right there. And then the last step here is just to pull up the uh, Ninja Traders strategy report. So if you right click on the chart, right, there's strategy performance. And of course, Blackbird is going to be what's on your chart. And you can choose historical, right? So there's no real time trades. This, right, back testing is all historical based. So you'll want to go into the historical. And there you go. Ninja Trader pulls up the historical back test. And surprisingly, <laughs> that crossover system did okay. Wow. That's a bit of a shock, but you know, every strategy has a good couple of weeks throughout the year. So, all right. So, Dean, there you go. There's that's it in a nutshell. Oh, now let's see. There was one other thing here that I wanted to point out and let me take a look yeah so we can see on on this trade here yeah that the stop loss was hit um, I'm trying to find I'm gonna try and find a trade where the stop loss is hit at break even yeah actually I think I I set the break even and the trailing a little too close together, so it's probably probably not gonna find it. But ah, actually, here we go. I think we did get one. Yeah, here we go. So there's the entry. And we can see that the stop loss was hit right one tick below the entry. So that that so that stop loss was hit at break even plus one. So we just got lucky there where the market moved down. It triggered that one and a half. Oh, let's see, actually, what did I set it at? Um, let's see. No, I set the break even. Yeah, the break even I set at one and a half ATRs of profit. Yeah, so there we go. So the market did move down to at least one and a half ATRs of profit to trigger that break even um, there. And the, yeah, one thing to keep in mind guys that when NinjaTrader does its back testing, it doesn't back test as it happened in real time, right? It uses these static bars so NinjaTrader doesn't know what happens inside the bar, All right? So for example, so let's say this bar here, 
had an extended wick, right, like so. Now my guess is that this bar probably triggered the one and a half ATRs of profit, and that would have pulled the stop loss right down to break even. So by this bar, and if this bar had a long wick, Ninja Trader would have considered the trade exited on this bar right there instead of being exited way over here. All right, so just keep in mind that when you do backtest, right, all trading platforms kind of have this inherent limitation, um, right, because it doesn't have the data of what happened while that bar was forming. So just keep that in mind, right, when you're back testing. Uh, Risk is asking, is there any difference between running an on-screen, basically a, a back test on a chart versus running in uh, NinjaTrader's strategy analyzer? Um, I don't think so. There, there shouldn't be, but that, you know, that's a highly detailed question there. So I would say that really needs to go to NinjaTrader support because there could be some subtle differences about the strategy analyzer that I'm not aware of, you know, that could create some differences. Um, it's my understanding that there aren't any, but Ninja Trader support has the final say so on technical detailed questions like that. So, and that's actually Rick's question here is a classic reason why we don't um, address Ninja Trader support type questions like that, you know, because, you know, we're not the ones that are writing the code for Ninja Trader, so we're not the experts. You know, NT support is clearly the experts, you know, on their platform. They're the ones that are able to communicate to the programmers and understand, you know, any kind of technical differences, you know, between backtesting on a chart versus in the strategy analyzer. So, you know, and who knows, with an update, they could change something, you know, and there's no way for anybody, there's no way for for us to know, there's no way for shark indicators to know if they did make a subtle difference in the code, you know, and, and, and so at any point the strategy analyzer could for some reason or could somehow generate more accurate backtest results versus a chart. You know, they could make that change at any moment. And, you know, we at shark indicators, we probably wouldn't know about that. You know, so that's another reason why we send questions like that. Uh, we defer you guys back to NinjaTrader support. So, yeah. So Dean is asking, does the market replay give a more accurate picture of results um, as compared to backtesting? Yeah, as compared to this um, static you know, I call this static backtesting because the bars are static, right? These bars are not forming in real time. So it's a static historical backtest. Um, whereas, yeah, whereas the using the playback connection, right? That's, that's a, that is historical, but it's a dynamic historical playback, right? So, so yeah, the playback connection will definitely provide the most accurate backtesting results that you can get of any backtesting. All right, so across all charting platforms, the most accurate backtest you can get is by using a playback type of connection where the market is played back in real, as if it's in real time. So that way, that way the strategy can react in real time as the bars are forming, right? The strategy gets that updated information and the strategy can move the stop losses in real time while a bar is forming, right? Whereas on this static bars, right? 
the strategy can only update the orders after the bar has closed. Well, I mean, all these bars are closed because they're static bars, right? So, Ninja, so Blackbird and all strategies basically process the data bar by bar because there is no, none of these bars are forming. So there is no, I can't think of a good terminology for it, but, but there is no data, you know, of the bar forming when you're back testing on a static historical chart, you know, but the playback connection, you know, when you run that, right, doing a back test using playback takes a lot longer because the bars have to form, right? It's playing. So the playback connection is, is replaying tick by tick. And so the strategy gets to process that tick by tick incoming data when you use the playback connection. So, so playback will absolutely give you the most accurate back test results possible. And yeah, so also let me pull up here. Yeah, if you go to the 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 uh, Blackbird introduction page here and scroll all the way down to the bottom. So, there you go. So there is a section at the very bottom, you know, some back testing kind of tips and help there, right? It's for you guys to know. So, and if anybody's interested in understanding you know exactly what a strategy does versus versus what ninja trader does there's a little illustration image there to kind of provide the basics of what a strategy actually does versus what ninja trader does for the strategy right so you got to realize that ninja trader does like almost half the work for a strategy you know right? strategies are basically just um, simple decision making trees you know and whereas ninja trader is really doing all the calculations so but anyways there's that little there here's a good video the mechanics of back testing there uh, so this is a little training webinar uh, well it's not training but a um, yeah i guess a, a little training on on the mechanics of back testing there uh, from futures IO so here's a little video on using the market replay best practices with strategies so um, and then here we go and then here's a big help section basically this is all ninja trader documentation here so like I said so for ninja trader 8 so here you go discrepancies of real-time versus back testing right market replay versus back testing so this is what this was dean's question here so um actually yeah this this is a link this is this isn't the documentation but this is a link to ninja traders support form where you know one of the ninja trader support team kind of gave a good a good explanation of the differences between the market replay or the playback connection versus back testing results right right so there's a bunch of basically um useful links to ninja traders documentation you know specifically on running a strategy and back testing strategies right so that way you guys have an easy easy way to find you know what what applies to back testing and strategies um within Ninja's documentation there.